up all you beautiful people it's Ashley here and today's video is about the 15 styles of distorted thinking now this is actually based on a post made by Neurolove so I'm gonna be going through the 15 different styles of distorted thinking but I think a more recognizable term would be cognitive distortions cognitive distortions now they are exaggerated or irrational thought patterns that are believed to perpetuate the effects of psychopathological states, especially depression and anxiety. These thoughts and beliefs, distortions, they can lead to problematic emotional states and behavior, like anxiety, low self-esteem, depression, and even relationship conflict. Real quick, I'm going to explain what cognition is. It is actually the mental action or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experience, and the senses. Number one, filtering. This is where you take all of the negative details of a situation and you magnify them while filtering out all of the positive aspects of the situation. For instance, a person will pick out a single and unpleasant detail of a situation and dwell on it excessively to the point where their perception of reality becomes dark and distorted. Number two, polarized thinking, also known as black or white thinking. I have a visitor. Now, just like its title says, things are either black or white. There is no in-between. You place people or situations in either or categories. There is no shades of gray. Not even 50. If your performance falls short of perfect, then you're a total failure. Number three, overgeneralization. Now this is where a person comes to a general conclusion based on a single incident or a single piece of evidence. If something bad has happened only once, we expect it to happen over and over again. She's turned her back on us. <laughs> Number four, jumping to conclusions. Now, without that other person saying so, we know what they're feeling and why they act the way that they do. Particularly, we're able to determine how people feel towards us. For example, we may conclude that someone else is acting negatively towards us, but we don't actually bother to find out whether we're correct or not. Number five, catastrophizing. I hope I pronounced that right. We expect disaster to strike, no matter what. This is also referred to as magnifying and minimizing. We hear about a problem or anything else and ask ourselves the what if questions. Now, for example, a person might exaggerate the importance of significant events like their mistakes or someone else's achievements. Or they may inappropriately shrink the magnitude of significant events until they appear tiny. For example, a person's own desirable qualities or someone else's imperfections. She switched locations now. <laughs> Number six, personalization. Now this is where I'm gonna believe that everything other people say or do is some kind of direct and personal reaction towards me. We're gonna compare ourselves to other people. We will we will also see ourselves as the cause of some unhealthy external event that we are not responsible for. For example, we were late to the dinner party and caused the hostess to overcook the meal. Number seven, control fallacies. Now, if we feel externally controlled, we see ourselves as a victim of fate. For example, I can't help if the quality of the work is poor. My boss demanded I work overtime on it. 
Now as for internal control, that is actually us assuming responsibility for the pain and happiness of everyone around us. For example, why aren't you happy? Is it because of something that I did? Number eight, fallacy of fairness. We're resentful because we think that we know what is fair, but other people won't agree with us. You know that phrase, life isn't always fair? Yeah. People who go through life apply a measuring ruler against every situation judging its fairness and they will often feel badly and negative because of it things will not always work out in your favor even when you think it should number nine blaming this is where we hold other people responsible for our pain or we take the other track and blame ourselves for every single problem Number 10, shoulds. Now we have a list of rules, but not just any kind of rules, okay? Ironclad rules. And they are about how we and other people should behave. People who are gonna break those rules are gonna make us mad, or we are gonna feel guilty for violating those rules. Now we may often believe that we are trying to motivate ourselves with shoulds, and shouldn'ts, musts, and oughts are also considered part of this. In the end, there is only one consequence and it's an emotional one called guilt. Number 11, emotional reasoning. We believe that what we feel must be true automatically. If we feel stupid and boring, then we must be stupid and boring. We assume that our unhealthy emotions reflect the way things really are. I feel it, therefore it must be true. Number 12, fallacy of change. Now this is where we expect people to change to suit us if we pressure or coax them enough. We feel the need to change people because our hopes for happiness seem to depend entirely on them. Number 13, global labeling. This is where we generalized one or two qualities into a negative global judgment. These are extreme forms of generalizing, also known as labeling and mislabeling. Instead of describing an error in the context of a specific situation, a person will attach an unhealthy label to themselves. For example, they may say, I'm a loser in a situation where they failed at a specific task. Mislabeling involves describing an event with language that is highly colored and emotionally loaded. For example, instead of saying that someone drops off her children at daycare every day, a person who is mislabeling might say that she abandons her children to strangers. Number 14, always being right. We are constantly on trial to prove that we're right, that our opinions and actions are correct. Being wrong is unthinkable, and we will go through any length to prove our rightness. Being right is often more important than the feelings of others, including loved ones. Number 15, heaven's reward fallacy. We expect sacrifice and self-denial to pay off. It's as if someone out there is keeping score. However, we feel bitter when that reward doesn't arrive. Oh my gosh, guys, we finally did it. We made it through all 15 styles of disordered thinking. Man, I'm tired. Okay, but seriously, you gotta be aware if you have any of these styles of thinking. If you can, try to shift your thinking into more rational thoughts, if possible. Well, I'm really glad I was able to do this video, but it doesn't have to stop here. Let's continue the discussion.
If you think there's anything I've missed out in this video, comment below. Do you have more things to add about each of these styles of thinking that I've mentioned? Leave some questions for me. I would love to do some more research and maybe even make another video about it. Now before I go, I want to make a quick little announcement. If you follow me on Tumblr or you follow Psych2Go on Tumblr, you would know that I have created a little Indiegogo campaign to raise funds for a brand new HD video camera. It's so that I can make these videos right now and all this time I have been making these videos on my laptop camera but I really want my videos to be better in terms of picture quality and sound so if you guys can contribute anything even how little I don't mind I will greatly appreciate it and I will love you guys more than I already do so and that is my time thank you so much for watching this video the link to the original Tumblr post and to all of my sources are in the description box below.